Okay, so I think I'm I'm ready. I was uh, I was looking if there is a pause button here, but I don't see a pause button here. Um, I can see it takes. Uh... Okay, so um, so maybe we can. So one of the things that uh, that I want to um, raise here is, as I was telling you in the last class, that we um, the okay. What is that? It was the fact that there is a okay. So what I was telling you earlier that there is a that there is an aura which uh, Benjamin seems to um, seems to while being critical of the aura uh, he also seems to be ambivalent about the end of the aura and uh, <clears throat> right um, uh, and that we saw earlier but I think in these new passages that we are doing today from section 5 onwards uh, do you guys have the text also with you? I would like you to have the text with you. Do you have the text with you? Um, um, there are two versions of the text. Uh, you know, one is the one which came out in this uh, collection called Illuminations. The other is this, which is the second edition, uh, which is the second edition um, <clears throat> of the thing. Of, of the, uh, not a, yes, the second edition, which is slightly longer, more elaborate uh, version. So, uh, so one of the things we saw was, yes, you know, that the masses, the way he talks about the masses and the massification, you know, uh, where he talks about uh, they want to possess and, uh, and when they want to possess, uh, you know, that collapsing of the distance. Um, and uh, and that's how earlier the aura was maintained. The distance was very important in the aura. Uh, but here the uh, uh, the but here the yeah I think yeah the eliminations one is fine. Uh, there's not much of a difference between the the one in the eliminations and the other one. So um, uh, so. Uh, um, yeah, so today we'll, uh, so we went to that point in section four, uh, which talked about, uh, you know, uh, he was, okay, anyone who, who saw that film, uh, the Lenny Leifenstahl film, um, The Triumph of the Will, anyone looked it up? Where is Sandra? Where is uh, Shane? Um, yeah. uh, anyone had a look at it or generally around it? Um, you know, I was, uh, I was, I was thinking, thinking this that uh, when we watch a film or something, uh, we say, "Oh, brilliant acting!" You know, uh, "Oh, great, yeah, yeah, Shane." Uh, oh, Kritika, great, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, so we saw that. Uh, you know, when you watch a film, uh, Shane, you say, "Oh, brilliant acting!" You know, as I was reading this, I was like thinking, "How do we look at cinema um, ourselves?" You know. And uh, and we say, oh, that's a that's a great film, uh, and then we say, oh, that's a great acting. Uh, the actor is brilliant. Shah Rukh Khan's role in Rai's film, or um, you know, um, that uh, uh, Alia Bhatt's role in uh, what was that film I saw? <laughs> uh, in this, um, uh, you know, Gully Boy. You know, amazing. Then you, at some point, you say, okay, but the amazing director, you know, director's idea, uh, Anurag Kashyap's idea, brilliant and all. Uh, and and so, so what's happening is, 
so and then you know sometimes when you when you just watch the film or just uh, go by the presence of Deepika Padukone or Shahrukh Khan or one of the celebrity stars um, and then later when you hear uh, the director or sometimes they have this joint conversations you know where there is Deepika Padukone and then there is the director of uh, where the Humor dance was there you know the very famous man uh, and then you realize that the director completely made the actor did what he wanted you know <laughs> Um, the director is so powerful uh, and powerful not in the sense of like powerful like a, you know whatever negative sense but that's the way the thing is and the director really tells even say there is Amitabh Bachchan um, who is uh, the actor and there is a very young um, director what do you think you know, how does it work or because Amitabh Bachchan is like the big B, you know, he's like big India, he's mother India or something like that, right? He's that big. And then there's this young director and Amitabh Bachchan is willing to act. And there also Amitabh Bachchan will be really, you know, the way uh, against the carpenter chisels a block of wood. That's how this director, the young chap is going to um, um, turn around Amitabh Bachchan and just tell him what? Tell Amitabh Bachchan how we should act and whether you should cry or whether you, the expression in his face and everything. And the director himself is here really with the camera. That's what the camera comes. So, um, so one is the um, one is the camera. Uh, so one is the one is the original story in which there is a character like that, you know. Uh, and somebody is playing that character, right? So Amitabh Bachchan or whatever, Shahrukh Khan is like playing that uh, character. And then what Benjamin is saying is that when this actor is acting, he is not acting for the audience directly. He is acting for the camera, for the director. So you often see that, you know. And then the director told that, no, no, you can't do this. And then... I, then I adapted and this director, really tough guy, he really made me go through all of this, you know, uh, to really bring that kind of a nuance uh, to that uh, to that role. Uh, so you see that the that the actor uh, is the actor's integrity, you know, the actor as a as a what can I say, like a unified whole or something like that, the actor with the spirit, the actor um, as himself, you know, um, is completely immaterial here. And, uh, and he has to completely adjust to the camera, you know. Um, and uh, so, um, so what you have is that uh, the, in theater, in a, in a straight where you have the audience in front of you, uh, you are also seeing the audience and you are kind of also, it's like, you know, whatever, like I'm teaching now through this uh, medium, but if I'm in the class, then I can actually see you guys, whether you are attentive or not, whether you're losing interest, you know, there is this kind of a live thing. And what I'm doing is that kind of organically, it's connected to the scene. Whereas when I'm doing this here, I do not know what you guys are doing, you know, right? I just see these little comments here. And, and more crucially is that <clears throat> does the actor, you know, perform for the camera or for the audience? And if one is performing for the camera, for the camera, and what that's what's going on, right? The actor is performing for the uh, camera and it should come well in the camera. You know, you might be a great, beautiful, handsome looking person. But, you know, in front of camera, your pictures always come bad. So what's the point of your beauty, man? What's the point of my beauty? I should be, that's why we say photogenic. Oh, he's very photogenic. That's what it means, right? Photogenic. Um, so this photogenic business, you know, <clears throat> so, no, but he always looks so bad in these pictures. But, you know, when you meet him, he actually looks very good. And that's where the, uh, that's where the, uh, that's where the, 
the aura thing comes because you see with the camera there's a split with the camera there's a split uh, between how the person actually looks uh, you know um, in himself uh, as a whole um, as a real living person and how the person looks in the for the camera or in the pictures right uh, so I think um, yeah so so we we totally see that so that's I think one aspect that we see highlighted here um, uh, and uh, okay there are some comments here uh, uh, okay so unable to paste it okay just send just send it to me on on whatsapp or email um as we talk uh so that then i can see then i can i can i can put it here i mean i can i can see it myself yeah so so please send it uh uh no see yeah, yeah send it to me as a file you can break it uh, yeah but here it you know comes in this really not a very nice form so um uh or you can do both just send it to me as a in my in my in my whatsapp or send it to me in my email. I would prefer that if you have my email, you know. Um, <clears throat> so um, yeah. So so what you see then is that, and, and that's where you see Benjamin is somewhere talking about, and that's a that's a that's a brilliant uh, take there about celebrity culture. You know. So uh, so there is this uh, celebrity culture. Celebrity culture that, uh, um, you know, that, that is so rampant, right? And, uh, and where is that? You know, let's go to that person. And I think that would really allow us to connect to uh, the notion of the aura. That thing that I was telling, that uh, the destruction of the aura, is that a... Is that something which uh, which Benjamin really welcomes or is he critical about that? Because there is this other dimension to the destruction of the aura, you know. I mean, you know, it's like destruction of the aura uh, versus some kind of a democratization, which Benjamin seems to be kind of imagining uh, the destruction of the aura leads to that. So, uh, and that's where you see that uh, this is uh, page 31 in the illuminations uh, section and this is section 10. If you go to section 10, uh, then what do you see? Um, I'll come back to the comments that you guys have made. Let's just uh, do this section 10 thing and then we'll come back to this. I'll just read all the comments that are go. Uh, Uzair Mir, yes, uh, we'll, I'll just come back uh, to the comments. Um, so if you go back to, go to section 10 uh, of the text, uh, Uh, I saw you just sent the thing to uh, my, uh, this thing. Can you send it to my email? Because then I can readily see it on my laptop. Uh, just send it in this email. Uh, so, yeah. So when you go to section 10, um, then uh, I will want you to go to uh, page 231. In page 30, 231, there is this para where, I, I let's see if you can find it, while facing the camera. Can you find that section, section 10, page 231 in the illuminations text? 
And then Benjamin writes, while facing the camera, he, that is the actor, knows that ultimately he will face the public. The consumers who constitute the market. Right? This market where he offers not only his labor, but also his whole self, his heart and soul is beyond his reach. <clears throat> During the shooting, he has as little contact with it as any article made in a factory. So you see how he, how he brings uh, the factory here and uh, just as the laborer, the worker in the factory wouldn't know really who is going to use that um, that 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 product that he's making. It's the same say, way in which the actor doesn't really have a control over the audience. The audience, who the audience is, will be decided by something else, some other factors, larger chains of distribution, circulation, all of that. Unless you are going to make a little um, alternative kind of a documentary film which you want to just show it among your friends. But here there is a big marketing thing. Film making a film is like a it's a very expensive thing. So you have producers, the people who put in money, and then it's circulated in a mass market. So during the shooting of the film, he has as little contact with it um, uh, as any article made in a factory. This may contribute to that oppression, that new anxiety, which, according to Pirandello, grips the actor before the camera. So. There's this anxiety. What is this anxiety of the actor? You know, do you think the actor is anxious? There's a kind of a anxiety which is produced specifically by having to face the camera, which is intrinsic to the medium of the film. So you see, <clears throat> uh, um, so what is this anxiety, you know, because, and that's what I think, you know, you've got to look up, you know, all these people, I know about Saru Khan, he was a national school drama guy and he was just doing acting, that is, he was doing theater. So when you go from theater, acting in front of a live audience, in front of a camera, and then become an actor where all these light boys are there and they will go find some location and in that he has to act eventually for an audience from which he's completely detached. So he might say, no, but you know, when I was acting, I could really sense whether the crowd is enjoying it. Of course, I know even with a, in a, in a play, um, the, the lights are turned off for the audience. It's very dark from what I remember. I mean, of course, you can have a you know, open air theater kind of a thing, you know, like a daytime where everybody sits and the, and the actors, uh, they completely are in the presence of the spectators. But most of the, even the plays uh, are pretty much like a film, I think, you know, to the extent that it's all dark here in the hall. They switch off the lights. Um, uh, and I don't know, maybe the modern actors in a theater have so kind of become used to this new uh, situation that they actually do not want to see the see the um, the see the faces. They they do not want the aura at all in any any ways. You know they don't want that entire thing to build, and they want that bifurcation. They want that dichotomy. Who knows? You know we've got to be open to that. Uh, so um, uh, right. Uh, but then, but then because, because, um, and that's where, you know, some of these, we want to really uh, check whether some of the actors we love who acted so well in this film, we want to know about the personal lives, you know, then we want to know, okay, and that's the entire tabloid culture, the tabloid culture, you know, that emerges, that you want to see how much, where did the Priyanka Chopra wedding happen, um, you know, I'm really dying for it. Uh, you know, so if there's any celebrity we see somewhere, um, then we go all like autograph and we want to take pictures and we want to like carry them home or something, you know, <laughs> we want to pause them, we want to pause them, we want to touch them, you know, there will be, there will be, there will be, there will be, uh, there will be a, a, a more frenzy when some of these actors turn out. 
so uh, that's because that's because you are i think thirsting for the real person you know of course when you go uh, lunge at them like that in a crowded place you all go for them you are going to that outer shell that is there as a celebrity um, um uh, so uh, and that's where benjamin says because you do not really you only they are performing for the camera and the audience is also judging them as they are performing in front of the camera because of that gap in a different way then uh, the masses want to connect with the celebrities and that's why the celebrity is produced uh, you know um, so uh, um, so uh, so in that section uh, 10 um, uh, going back to that same para um, um, uh, uh, Benjamin says that uh, this may during the shooting he has as little contact with it as any article made in a factory this may contribute to that oppression, that new anxiety, which, according to Pirandello, grips the actor before the camera. So there might be that anxiety, you know, because I'm not seeing the people for whom I'm performing. I do not know for whom I'm performing. At some point, through the marketing distribution industry, it will eventually reach those. But that is like, really, I do not know, you know, whom I'm, I'm performing for this. So there's this entire abstraction of the audience. The film responds to the shriveling of the aura with an artificial buildup of the personality outside the studio. So this is shriveling the aura. There's no aura, you know, here because you're not seeing them. Uh, this thing, you know, in 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 flesh and blood. <clears throat> um, so uh, so this entire shriveling of the aura with an artificial buildup of the personality outside the studio. The cult of the movie star, fostered by the money of the film industry, preserves not the unique aura of the person, but the spell of the personality, the spell of the personality, the phony spell of a commodity. And this commodity here, yeah. The phony spell of a commodity that is then crafted like that. So all these celebrity actors will have their agents, you know, they are the agents tell them which picture should be released, which uh, where they should appear, where they should not appear. I mean, the entire the phony spell for it to be a phony, for it to be phony and to be a spell, it has to be really crafted like that by agents, by brokers, basically. Dalal logo, you know. Wo bolte hai, hai, madam, ab mat jaiye. So when Deepika Padukone goes to Jane, everybody is like thinking, I mean, from the perspective of the of the of 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 maintaining the cult of the movie star, right? Was it a good move? He said, maybe not. You know, what kind of a advisor, what kind of an agent does she have? Which agency is handling her 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 movements, you know? They, they, it might harm her cult status, right? So um, uh, now, the other thing that we need to keep in mind here, and that's where the masses thing really come, because in the last class, I remember I was asking myself and asking all of you that in in what way is the film, is the cinema, a medium of uh mass culture where does the mass really come and you know in these ways now we know right because this uh celebrity culture which is which of course presupposes the mass masses you know um uh, of course we can say it doesn't even need to be an actor you can be just uh uh, uh whatever you know what is that uh now whatsapp the other thing uh on social media where you can put a lot of pictures uh you could be just doing that instagram insta insta you can insta yourself instagram you know so uh, all these uh, people what are those five four five sisters they are like this major celebrities from the from the west uh yeah kim kardashian yeah all these people they don't, don't do acting you just have to just uh you just have you can just contrive it you just conjure it out of thin air you can just become a celebrity um 
so uh, yeah, so so one of the things then that we see, which is the mass element here, is this that this then followed by millions of followers and fans. Uh, maybe you know people say well, the one of the earlier celebrities was uh, uh, Michael Jackson. You know, well Michael Jackson was a great artist. Uh, so okay, it looks legitimate. And uh, and do you know from the third world? Michael Jackson coming from the U.S. and all from the third world, the biggest global icon. Who that is supposed to be? Do you guys know that? Who is the first global icon coming from the third world? Like, I can not like in 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 the sense of Gandhi or something, you know, but like a like this fake life kind of thing. Utterly rich and you know <laughs> the way celebrities are, they want an island or something like that. In the third world, anyone you can think of? Mm. Yeah, Bruce Lee, maybe. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> God, Bruce Lee comes out of Hong Kong, you know. So uh well, uh um yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, Bruce Lee, but who else? Jack, ah, come on, man. He was going the similar thing, you know. Jackie Chan is not bigger than Bruce Lee. I mean, not just films. Michael Jackson is not from films. Don't just think about movies. Batao? You can say Amitabh Bachchan himself is a global icon now. Shahrukh Khan, but I was talking about the slightly earlier this thing. But even like, okay, maybe some of this. Uh, anyone, Kritika, you want to? Shane? Bob Marley, exactly. Bob Marley, yes. I think it's Bob Marley. <laughs> Bob Marley is the from the third world and black on top of it and uh, really singing you know in a very different kind of a reggae beat uh completely like uh, outside of the usual this thing you know so and bob marley changed the and look at even bob marley like you see his pictures everywhere even in india you know in india which is such a stuck up society so so inappropriate so ill-designed is Indian society and culture for reggae music, you know, <laughs> and yet even in India, it's so popular. You can imagine how much popular he is in the rest of the world. Um, so, um, yeah, but I think, I think uh, Princess Diana is also supposed to be, those of you who want to maybe work on celebrity culture or something, Princess Diana is also supposed to be one of those um, key moments, you know, of, uh, of a, of a high uh, celebrity uh, culture. So, uh, so what Benjamin is doing is like connecting uh, this um, camera, you know? So, so what I love about uh, those like Benjamin and others that we did from the avant-garde is that they can really take you to the technical quality of a gadget you know, unless we use this pathetic word gadget you know camera is it a gadget well it, well you can see here it's far more than a gadget it's a very powerful gadget you know it completely transforms the relationship between masses and the leaders because you see there is this um there's this uh, one footnote uh in this book um i want to draw your attention to that footnote and i guess uh you guys are reading so much, so you already know which footnote I'm talking about. Uh, footnote to this uh, essay, where uh, he talks about uh, the relationship um, um, between politicians, masses, and where does the parliament come in. And the fact that Modiji wants to bypass parliament and government and come to directly talk to the masses, you know, right? Um, he's directly talking to you, you know through the camera um so the so he is not just going to speak as the prime minister in the parliament 
ही विल कम एंड डू अहलान यू नो लाइक एज द वी आर लिविंग इन अ मोनार्की और समथिंग लाइक बट दैट्स नॉट मोनार्की यू नो दिस इज सेलिब्रिटी कल्चर um uh, this is directly there's this one person and then there are millions of masses who are directly communicating with the leader uh which uh, benjamin points out uh and that's the thing that modi does right what is the what is the specificity of modi really that he is over and above the bjp that he is over and above his council of ministers that he is over and above the parliament and in all these uh, political processes and all of that and he is also the way he tries to craft his image or his team wants to craft his image is that he is also above all the caste class all these contradictions and all that so he will speak on a issue like corona virus which is really kind of uh, affecting all you know so he wants to be the leader of all whereas if he speaks on shine bag or something which is very divisive right which immediately leads to polarization so the positioning of himself because he has ambitions of being a global leader and all of that is definitely um that kind of a positioning would mean that he wants to he should speak on corona virus which he did and he wants to directly not just like just being the prime minister saying that okay because as a prime minister i need to step into this and all that you know um just uh, carrying on the duties of the prime minister no he is coming here as the leader of the people is the, there is the masses and there is the leader so he will do man ki baat are why should you do man ki baat why should there be man ki baat uh, because he is uh, carrying out a professional duty as a prime minister and that's where um you know the implication of what benjamin is saying would be that uh that the that the the mediation by the camera the fact that the camera comes in between okay means that uh separately the cult of the movie star has to be built outside of the studio similarly the cult of modi the hriday hriday samrat has to be built outside the parliament you know it's like the the parliament is like the camera yeah parliament is the camera parliament is the studio it's within the studio that you want to restrict modi no <laughs> you know then of course you will not be even elected for him to get elected and come back to the studio in the next elections modi has to be has to build that personality and that's why when we say that uh, mon uh, pradhan mantri from before manmohan singh you know he was just like a studio guy you know there's nothing about him uh, outside the studio there's no cult of this guy you know and in that kind of a condition the only way he could be successful is i think if only he was such a brilliant actor yeah and people love him for that so even though there is no cult of him outside the studio still people love him but well manmohan singh wasn't that great a prime minister either nor did he have a cult outside the studio so what happened nothing you know he ended so can you see that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that footnote 12 i think it is uh yeah footnote 12 um uh, you know which goes from the which goes from the um, from the i don't know page something okay yeah uh, yeah oh uh, mir uh, you're right you know even chegovera oh nusrat oh thank you for bringing this up uh, nusrat how can i forget nusrat nusrat yeah nusrat fateh ali khan um yeah nusrat also you're right um nusrat um uh, nusrat fateh ali khan he is he's definitely uh yeah he is global nusrat is global uh and yeah you're right far more global than uh, these bollywood stars this priyanka chopra and all that people will forget them you know this amitabh bachchan and all well not maybe for his earlier movies but for the later movies i think people are going to forget him so yeah i think i think nusrat 
uh, has that kind of a global reach. Also, the kind of music, you know, the the the, the his his uh, his his artistry is so brilliant, you know. And in fact, yeah, Nusrat could be someone like that, that he is so good, so good, so good that we don't even want to, uh, you know, he, he doesn't need a cult of the, um, the, the, the artist, you know, outside of the studio. You know, he's maybe an example of that, uh, uh, Mir, um, that uh, he's just so brilliant. Um, yeah, I can think of some actors. I don't know, people say Nasiruddin Saak acting or something. So, yeah, so um, um, if you can see the uh, this um, uh, footnote 12, where he talks, he in fact mentions the parliament, you know, there. Um, 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 do you want to, sh should I read it? Uh, in class, I used to read it, but uh, here, uh, I don't know if this form works. Um, yeah, Che Guevara too, you know, uh, um, yeah. So the, the change noted here in the method of exhibition caused by mechanical reproduction applies to politics as well. The present crisis of the bourgeois democracies. <laughs> you see, to when, he, when he talks about the crisis of the bourgeois democracies in 1930s, it's so true, you know, it has so much power to it. Because now, in retrospect, you, we know that soon after Hitler is going to take over and these dem liberal democracies are, democracies are going to be destroyed. Uh, the present crisis of the bourgeois democracies comprises a crisis of the conditions which determine the public presentation of the rulers. Now, look at this term. You guys do political science. Tell me, where have you encountered this term? Public presentation of the rulers. Monkey bath, you know, yesterday, Prime Minister Modi addressed the nation, the public presentation of the rulers. Do you have any concept in political science which will allow me to understand this? I doubt. <laughs> Democracies exhibit a number of government, a member of government directly and personally before the nation's representatives. I mean, that's the claim that democracies make. Parliament is his public. That's the studio, right? Parliament is the studio. Since the innovations of camera, now look at this now. <laughs> Since till here, it is like, okay, good old classic political science. But after that, the sentence says, since the innovations of camera and recording equipment make it possible for the orator to become audible, and visible to an unlimited number of persons, the presentation of the man of politics before camera. The presentation of the man of politics before camera and recording equipment becomes paramount. You're talking about Modi here, right? This is an article written by someone today. Parliaments, as much as theatres are deserted. Yeah, who cares for the parliament? <laughs> who cares for the parliament? You know, <laughs> uh, parliaments, as much as theatres are deserted. Uh, radio and film not only affect the function of the professional actor, but likewise the function of those who also exhibit themselves before this mechanical equipment, those who govern. So not just about the professional actor, but likewise the function of those who exhibit themselves before this mechanical equipment, those who govern. Though their tasks may be different, the change affects equally the actor and the ruler. My God, this is the theme of today's, uh, you know, lecture writing, you know, the actor and the ruler. Actor and the ruler. Uh, well, some of you would say the ruler as actor and get all very sarcastic, you know, don't do that, you know. That is not the point of uh, Benjamin. Benjamin's point is not 
that oh you know he's a ruler he should only only rule why is he doing becoming an actor that's not the point that's again this liberal critique you know he's not saying that he's rather saying that the only way today that you can be a ruler whatever if you like your democratically elected ruler is by being an actor otherwise how will you connect with the masses and why should he not connect with the masses i mean why should narendra modi the prime minister we all love to hate because he's a fascist or something why should he not go on national tv and do a televised address and not just that right we're not just talking about that but he actually tries to do more than that just monkey bath and really connect directly to the uh, masses and all of that why should he not do that yeah weber's notion of charisma and courtly etiquette ah yeah um um but that's the thing you know in say someone like weber or in that kind of a framework where you're talking about modern bureaucratic rationality and charisma um, um the what underlies bureaucratic rationality is also something else which you don't really find in weber but that's where benjamin is coming you know benjamin is telling you when you have all these conversations about instrumental rationality bureaucratic rationality the way weber talks about what underlies it is these kind of transformations in material culture the rise of the film rise of the cinema which also means that it now re uh, configures the relationship between the leader and the masses or rather it creates the mass the mass is produced the masses are produced so the leni reference style film sandra and shane and also every one of you is really pitching itself there right the because it's a film triumph of the will it's a film why it has to be triumph of the will that something we will discuss separately but that film uh founds the masses it resurrects the masses it generates the masses as it were you know right uh so uh so that kind of a thing so um uh, so i'll just look at the um look at the things that some of you might have sent me so let me just look at what shane and sandra has uh sent me uh and uh, okay uh 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 okay their emphasis okay their emphasis on elements of speed hands and flames and pyrotechnics in darkness characteristic of fascist futurism which was the medium used to that shane writing we're reading benjamin and we are reading shane which was the medium used to emphasize the aesthetic of politics if i'm to look at it from the perspective of walter the brilliant use of the orchestra which marks the distinction between cuts from the workers where a marching tune is played showing discipline coordination to the village folk marked by jolly accordion music yeah the accordion music there's something about the accordion i think which is very much like a mass like thing we have come to yeah we have come to associate with the woke the people is very important in the accordion you know the accordion you know the aisa aisa karke bajata hai na right uh, that accordion music yeah, it's a very folk uh, connection and uh, apparently yeah the the so shane is telling us that the film uses that <clears throat> the element of paternalism of the furor is depicted by use of the bullish of effect simultaneous shots of hitler smiling warmly and embracingly followed by the masses gathered in nuremberg fraternity was shown by displaying aerial so the film can be divided into the 
preparation and welcome of Hitler. Yeah, yeah, that was the that was there's a, so there's a National Socialist Congress uh, in which Hitler is going, and then this filmmaker is uh, is filming that and then crafting it because I think it was a long uh, uh, footage. The, she had a lot of footage, you know, very long, many hours, and she then meticulously edits that and that's the thing the editing or the montage that's the mechanical reproduction right uh that is going on uh so <clears throat> uh unsurprisingly besides the Najaf, there was no emphasis on older people okay so um uh, yeah, Laini reference style. It's a, it's a popular propaganda movie in Nazi Germany made in 1935. Well, uh, it is a propaganda movie, but it is a propaganda which has no propaganda. You know, as in there's no voiceover. There's no attempt to convince anyone of anything. Um, you know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, so it's not really like trying to win you over. It is not ideological in that sense. It is ideological, but it is not ideological in the usual sense. Um, it is just creating this. I mean, anyone who is also an anti-fascist would feel moved by those the grandeur of the scenes. You know, that the it kind of that the aura, right? That the spell it casts a spell on you. So there is no argumentative convincing of you or by showing he's so he's done this or something, you know, he's done this work and you should like him. There's no rational kind of a, um, you know, attempt to win over anyone. But it's like really the, 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 the aura and the spell that has been built here. So propaganda movie in Nazi uh, Germany. This is Sandra. Made in 1935, Hitler have reported to have reported to ask Freifenstahl to make an artistic movie, then a political one. Yeah, so it's an artistic movie, then a political one. Look at that. The film is artistic, you know, rather than political. Uh, I mean, it is, that's the thing, but it's very political. We all know that. Which is why she was called to make the movie uh then a party worker you should have edited this properly this uh, sums up the link and powerful connection of art of film uh, this thing the most highlighting factor of triumph of will is its cinematographic skills as is shot blends into another with varying musical background despite the absence of any commentaries it rightly appealed to the people the, the whole movie scenes are from the nuremberg party conference in 1934 reference style the director has grabbed brilliant moments to rally in each scene, as could be seen in smile. This thing, the artistic brilliance enabled to convey, convey or rather convince the audience uh, Hitler as the rightful leader. Various notions of politics of art by Walter Benjamin can be seen at work in this movie. Triumph of the Will as a movie stands as a proof of transcendence of the art of film beyond its time and space in decades of mechanical reproduction, claiming its authenticity as a historical. Testimony. Um, yeah, so, okay, fantastic, great. You know, I hope others have also seen it. So on this note, uh, let me draw your attention to um, to one other person in the text um, because what uh, Sandra pointed out that, that this is this artistic uh, uh, thing rather than a political thing. A political film is the artistic venture rather than a political venture and of course the two are kind of they converge nevertheless uh, if you go to page 232 in the illuminations uh, section with the section 10 again yeah the same section same section which has the cult of the movie star Is 232. There's this sentence on which starts with in Western Europe. In 
Western Europe, In Western Europe, the capitalistic exploitation of the film denies consideration. I hope you can find it. In Western Europe, the capitalistic exploitation of the film denies consideration to modern man's legitimate claim to being reproduced. What is this modern man's legitimate claim Modern man's legitimate claim to being reproduced man so it should be fight for a right to be reproduced or something <laughs> what do you say? Is there anything blocking our right to being reproduced? And then it says, yeah, in Western Europe, the capitalistic exploitation of the film denies consideration to modern man's legitimate claim to being reproduced. Under these circumstances, the film industry is trying hard to spur the interest of the masses through illusion promoting spectacles and dubious speculations. You see this? Illusion promoting spectacles and dubious speculations. What does, but what does the Kumar Gaurav? Yes, you're right. But what is the reproduction of modern man? What is this reproduction, material reproduction? That's where the crux is, right, of this essay. He's talking about the, that we should have a legitimate right to reproduce ourselves. What does it mean? What does it mean to reproduce ourselves? We are already here and living. What is there to reproduce ourselves? What, have more children or something? Is he saying that? As in, you know, and of course he's, uh, he's, he's, he's questioning the film industry. He's saying they're just doing this illusion, promoting spectacles and dubious speculations. It's against that. So he's against this, what the film industry is doing, which is uh, this illusion producing creating a facade that is separate from our, yeah. So you know what, there are two things here. Yeah, Devahuti, yeah. Um, the two things here, one is like Benjamin is, is understanding that the destruction of the aura itself leads to leads to commoditization to capital
at the same time capital itself produces another kind of aura right You're seeing the tension here. Look at this, right? So, so on the one hand, so which means that, but Benjamin also So the so the initial destruction of the aura is leading to commoditization. So that's the cult of the movie star. So what you have in theater that the coming of the film industry or the camera destroys. Now he welcomes that destruction. He welcomes the destruction. Now, in the destruction of the aura, okay, let me put it this way. In the destruction of the aura, is the possibility, in the destruction of the aura, is the possibility of the You see, in the destruction of the aura, I'm also writing it down for you. In the destruction of the aura is the possibility of material reproduction, which is what he wants us to celebrate. But this possibility of the material reproduction also is fertile ground for capital. But this possibility of the Material reproduction is also fertile ground for or the cult of the movie star for the film industry. making what am i writing here in the destruction of the aura is the possibility of the material reproduction which is what he which is what benjamin wants us to cel celebrate but the possibility of the material reproduction is also Vital ground for the cult of the movie star, for the film industry, for capital. Oops, yeah. it's not going. Have I already sent it to you? No, I haven't. Why isn't it going? 
Oops. Have I already sent it to you? I think I have. No, I haven't. I'm trying to send this thing that I wrote. Can you see this thing that I wrote? I don't think it is gone. You hang me, hang me, hota hai, kya? Can you see this thing that I just sent you? Yeah. Oh, going. You see, that is the Okay, now now read it together. I send it in two <clears throat> two parts. So read this together. Kritika, read this together. Shane, Sandra. Yeah, 200 characters, man. This is so limiting, you know. It's so limiting. This is useless. We can't catch a thinker like Benjamin just like that in 200 words. How can they do this? This is not Twitter or something. So, so read this together. In the destruction of the aura is the possibility of the material production, reproduction, which is what Benjamin wants us to celebrate. I hope you are clear about what we really mean by reproduction of ourselves, right? Uh, which he wants us to celebrate. But this possibility of the material reproduction is also fertile ground for the cult of the movie star. If that is the case, then why does he want us to celebrate? For the film industry making profits for capital. And that is, I think, the tension that uh, we need to address here, which we find in uh, Benjamin. So, um, but which so the material reproduction that he's talking about and which he wants us to kind of defend that, you know, man's legitimate claim to being reproduced. That is the reproduction that he's talking about, you know, this entire culture that we have. Okay, so, 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 so selfies, I take a lot of selfies, I take a lot of pictures, and uh, I discover myself, my personality, my mood, and all that by taking a lot of selfies, right? Is that material reproduction? Uh, I, uh, I do not really, okay, gambling. You know, I have no gods to celebrate, to worship, no almighty, nothing. But I kind of get by getting really excited and enervated through gambling. I am a sports fan. You know, I go to watch sports. 
and I get really crazy as a fan, you know, for my team and all. Is that a material kind of reproduction we are talking about? Uh, of the masses. Take pictures. We want to grab it, you know, we want to pause it as we were seeing in the last this thing. There's no distance. Um and uh, and and we can really uh, break down everything and like make it into moving parts, uh, you know. And really, uh, you remember uh, I earlier mentioned the, how Charlie Chaplin um, uh, does not uh, have a surface to his personality, uh, you know, um, that there is just this. Uh, um, you know, this, this, that, that surface is not there. Um, uh, you know, there is a, maybe he has a deep interior, like a beautiful soul. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a beautiful mind or something. But he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a surface. Of course, he's doing that to kind of show this tramp um, as a marginalized and oppressed or something. But this surfacial thing, you know, like you have a surface, your personality, aura, does that then take you towards the cult? Does that take you towards the ritual? Does it, you know, and 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 the, and the aura, uh, and and is Benjamin just trying to break that and really take us to what is called the bodily sensorium? You know that that um, uh, that all this the the pleasures of gambling or being a flaneur in the city. Um, of really having perceptions and, uh, uh, you know, emotive states that are so uh, palpable, you know, that is so bodily, uh, you know, uh, that it is so almost like motor mechanical, you know. So there is a, there's a sense in which that the, that the human being, well, not really automaton, you know, it is like, you are going in the direction of being an automaton, but just there something happens because of which the being an automaton gets suddenly invested with a soul or something, you know. That's where, that's the plane at which it looks like Benjamin is trying to place us. Um, you know, Jill Deleuze, while talking about Vertov, talked about the eye in the matter, you know, that that's what worth of cinema does. The movie camera moving everywhere means that the eye has now come in matter itself. And um, so the automaton thing that you are a robot or something, I'm taking an extreme case, of course, yeah, you know, uh, where we really get so much into this material reproduction, technological reproduction, but that's where uh, you know, uh, Benjamin and following Benjamin or before Benjamin, people like Charles Baudelaire and others, they really explored that possibility of these modern conditions, um, you know, uh, where you can really experience the city, for example, in that way. Um, like, as you know, a, a, a city is that kind of a space. If you go out to nature, if you go out to villages, you know, then there you're enjoying nature, this thing. Uh, but it is a kind of a flat enjoyment, you know, of nature. Of course, you can go and look at these little worms and little insects and think, oh, look, this is how it is doing. But overall, you just look at the scenery. You, of course, as a typical middle class person, you go to the mountains and you just take the view as a whole, you know, beautiful scenery. Let's take a picture of oh, a beautiful, lovely sunset and all that. Whereas, uh, okay, then the the... You can look at the little insects and maybe get that kind of a motor mechanical push, uh, you know, that uh, that that uh, uh, the kind of um, jerk, you know, uh, that uh, that um, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Benjamin talks about following Baudelaire while playing gambling. You know, there's this uh, kind of a jerk. There's a kind of a sudden this thing. I think he compares that with the worker while well, working with the machine. You know, the machine gives a certain jerk or something like a push like this. And the gambler also gets like this when suddenly he loses or wins. Um, <clears throat> um, so, um, 
um, uh, yeah so uh, uh, yeah with the this thing but in the urban in the but in the urban space uh, when you walk around in a dense urban neighborhood there are all kinds of things this this uh, shoemaker who is like doing this thing this this chai fellow doing this thing and then maybe there are some pickpockets roaming around and there's a police where the thing goes like this you know there's a medical store there's a guy selling fish on the roadside you know the urban space the town space uh is full of all these or there's a beggar who is like really um you know you can't look him into the eye you know right and you avoid that or something right and 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 the and the road the vehicles and you have to save your body from all of it so you are really exposed to so much stimuli you know there's like you've been constantly being 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 stimulated uh being uh being stimulated as in being told to react to a lot of these uh these uh these uh um uh, these uh these things that are coming at you basically they're coming at you you know and you are constantly constantly dodging and all of that um uh, right and that kind of a um uh, the 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 sensory responses that get created you know um that is that is something which in the 1920s and slightly earlier the 30s that kind of urban mass culture is kind of uh, really taken seriously by these guys that's why um uh, you know benjamin would walk in the in the city arcades you know in paris in all these urban areas and really smell the city you know uh sense the city you know um kind of a thing and bodelier is is really the guy who 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 sets us there and uh, and and benjamin and bodelier uh benjamin is kind of builds on bodelier you know there uh <clears throat> kind of a thing so uh okay um so um so that is the kind of thing um uh, um and of course in the in the earlier part something which uh, i thought i'll do with you guys you know where it talks about the family album the photography uh, uh the the you know the um the how the how the cult value finally once the photography comes um, uh, um how the cult value is about the you know is 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 only in the family album you know where you see uh, where you see the family picture uh you know uh so the so the exhibition value that he talks about um in the uh, in i think the fifth uh, in 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 the earlier this thing yeah cult value versus exhibition value artwork and magic did you guys notice the thing that he talks about magic there artwork and magic Uzair I know there were some earlier remarks uh, that you guys had made I'm seeing if I have so that I haven't missed any of that Anything about magic people have noticed Okay what about breaking of the fourth wall what was that when actors directly engage with the audiences that is like what in the when do where do actors directly engage with the audiences like in the premiere shows when maybe they come back to the college some of these big actors they come to their alma mater their old college hindu college kirodi mall and then they interact a little bit i think amitabh bachchan at once come to kirodi mall college uh that's what you mean uh, was there by the breaking of the fourth wall uh uh creating a facade that is separate from our authentic selves and taking out a about a very selective portrayal of dominant narratives rather than organic experiences of the master shane you can maybe expand a little bit what do you mean by that could he be talking about a very selective portrayal of dominant narratives rather than organic experiences selective portrayal of dominant narratives 
Okay, not very clear. Uh, the irony is that Ozer Mir, the irony is that cinema being a potent medium of expression has to be commercialized to even convey a message that is authentic. The irony is that cinema being a potent medium of expression has to be commercialized, yeah, to even convey a message that is authentic, yeah. Satakshi, to narrate the incommunicable experiences is reproducing the, um, to narrate the incommunicable experiences is, re is reproducing. The reactivation of that aura. Oh, Satakshi, I can't follow you. It's so difficult to narrate the incommunicable experiences is reproducing. Okay. I can put some sense there. To narrate the incommunicable experience is reproducing the reactivation of that aura in consideration. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so there is an incommunicable experience, but uh, you narrate it still. Okay. Um, I can only think of copyright as capital obstructing. Uh, as capital obstructing the mechanic. Okay. Copyright. Yes, that's true. That's to so through the aura of the authentic art is preserved. Yeah, the copyright. Yes, the copyright definitely is a is a is the thing here. You know, uh, the copyright is definitely a thing here, where uh, the yeah no no you're right about the, you know that's the thing about the copyright as capital obstructing the mechanical reproduction of modern man. Where kind of it blocks the, um, yeah, but yeah, copyright though is something which uh, already means that the book is published or the film is made and uh, the lecture has been given. Because I was wondering, all these lectures we are doing, maybe you know, YouTube suddenly uh, claims ownership to this and we lose uh, our right over it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it is about the, that kind of a thing where the, uh, yeah. And then the aura of the authentic art is preserved. Yeah. Um, the lack of access. Sometimes you don't get a book and you think, I know Shane was looking for a book recently and then you think, my God, if only I got that book, I'm sure that everything is there in that book. And then you finally get it and there was nothing much in it, you know? So, but the fact that you can't get it, that creates the aura. Um, so, uh, that kind of thing. Swa Saswat Mishra has retracted. I love these retractions, you know. <laughs> um, it's like the WhatsApp ka message delete. Um, uh, okay, so Kritika, he compares magician and surgeon to a painter and cameraman. Okay, does he? Magician and surgeon. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know what? Now it, this reminds me. The, the surgeon and the camera. Do you guys, you know, have you ever been to a nursing home or do you have like uh, anyone had an operation or something by a surgeon? One of your family members uh, got surgery or something. You know, they have this little camera where the camera goes inside, you know. So you don't have to cut it. They do laser operation or something. Uh, the camera goes inside. So where, and you know, at another point, we haven't, we didn't do that section where uh, Benjamin talks about the the close-ups and the slow motion and how the camera can kind of literally straddle. So here I have this table, so I can keep a camera underneath. So it can really straddle up and down uh, the surface uh, from very odd kind of perspectives. So the surgeon's camera, uh, you know, actually goes deep inside, you know, and uh, and he doesn't need to cut uh, your stomach or something, you know, just uh, this thing. Um, uh, he compares magician and surgeon to a painter and cameraman. Yeah, so so that's right. Um, but the but the magic part, I was asking you guys about the magic because the that section has uh, where art is magic because the earliest people, why did they do art? If the caveman went and did a thing on the cave, why did he do it? It was not for exhibition. Was it for exhibition? No, it is not for exhibition. It had magical value. 
it is like those old things of your family that you have kept it inside your box somewhere you know and it is something which maybe like i don't know the sari your mother was wearing when she got married and now she's going to hand over to the daughter who is now grown up that is maybe eventually it will come out you will wear it and go and say well do you know what this is my mother's sari but otherwise it's not for exhibition like that it has some kind of a magical value to it you know like it is it is it is something which you preserve inside you know it's not like something which you just put it out there so the exhibition value so the so the earliest people who did art in that sense they did it because it had a magical it was it had a magical value it had a power like some deities. I think he talks about those deities, you know, were just preserved in that sanctum sanctorum. You can't have the Tirupati Mandir, uh, you know, deity out on the public, uh, this thing, you know, even though we know like a lot of uh, public, uh, too many public places being taken by temples. <laughs> but that's a different kind of <laughs> material reproduction, I guess. But they have this. So earlier it was like that. And it talks about where in the church, uh, you know, there are certain places there, um, you know, there are these uh, glass paintings or, you know, some portrait of Mother Mary or something, which you are not supposed to see from, from below, you know. Um, so, uh, so that's the thing about the, the, the exhibition uh, value not being there, but with photography, with material production, with the rise of the masses, comes this end of art as magic, you know, and hence as reproducibility. Like Woody Allen, Annie Hall, breaking off the, of the fourth wall. Okay, you guys are using this fourth wall term. What is this fourth wall uh, term, Devauti? I'm uh, not able to connect here. Um, breaking of the fourth wall. Oh, that's the aura? What's the fourth wall? Sir, just a gentle reminder to please upload the video later. The internet can too weak to... Ah, okay, 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 Ishita. I'll do that. Oh, you know, on this, on this, what Ishita is asking here, I was like wondering, there are some privacy issues, you know, in, in terms of uploading a class video. Uh, I leave it to the, the August gathering here to consider that. Uh, we need to kind of uh, run our minds on that. Ozer Mayor, I know you are not interested in this privacy issues. Um, uh, in movies, when actors break character and speak directly to the audience. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. So in some movies, there's you know, where, the, where the actor directly talks to the audience. And that's the thing, it is trying to like break that spell. So in a way, you know, it is great that that happens, that the entire control, I don't know, fourth wall or something of the commodity framework of the cult of the movie star is kind of short-circuited. You transgress that, you know, Omer, um, Ozer, when you talk about the 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 actor directly talking to the audience in the middle of the film um so that is a good thing you know uh kind of short circuiting this but again that's where the aura is again constructed so hitler's relation to the masses is again precisely that this is short circuiting so modi will not just act as a pure functionary of as being a prime minister working through the uh, his studio which is the parliament but he will directly connect so in a sense there has to be a direct and i think this is the crux what benjamin is saying is that the direct connect is needed yes you got to bypass the aura you got to bypass the spectacle of the commodity the aura of the commodity also not just the old traditional feudal sense of the aura you need to do a direct connect but the direct connect has to happen in that bodily sense you know the direct connect uh, has to happen not when you, the leader and the masses are all part of this one uh, spell, you know, because in the reference style film, Triumph of the Will, 
the masses and the leader are also one there you know it's like the movie star directly talking to the audience or modi directly addressing his people through man ki baat jan ki baat and all of that right um so so the furor the hitler is directly talking to the masses there the masses are at one in fact the leader and masses are one and that's something which you will see hannah arendt will be talking about but that's happening within that very transcendental metaphysical but at the same time also quite techno futuristic kind of a thing going on there so it is metaphysical transcendental but at the same time it is also including the possibility of death which is a real thing not very transcendental not very metaphysical you could imagine death is not all that abstract right um, um and the and the and the willingness to give your life or being a warrior um uh, the radiant corporeality you know so uh so in a way you can say that benjamin also from a very different angle is approaching the radiant corporeality you know benjamin and bodelier and all these people that ernst humer is talking about but the perspectives are completely different you know um it's like somebody is that like, trekked the way up to the mountain and somebody just got airlifted there of course both are at that point in time on top of that hill but come on man those they mean completely different things when you trek your way up and when you are getting air dropped completely different so the apparent convergence of um, um uh, of uh of uh the material reproduction that benjamin is talking about and the radian corporeality that ernst humer is talking about that can be disentangled only if you were to see that the internally it's configured in very different ways right so the so right so so these two and i think that's really the crux that we need to ponder about yeah this is one of the comment sukanya oh okay oh sorry about that yeah so um, um so uh, so i think that's really the crux you know that uh, these uh, these two concepts Uh, of uh, Benjamin talking about material reproduce. So what I want you to think about is really talk about this tension then in Benjamin. Um, uh, and I think when you reflect on that tension, the interrelationship between aura, uh, the breaking of the aura, and the coming of the commodity economy, but uh, the breaking of the aura, which also leads to the material reproduction which benjamin seems to welcome so uh, so the breaking of the aura the destruction of the aura then seems uh, to be a mixed bag you know right that kind of thing so okay um uh, this is another class i was told you have a class at 3 uh, but i guess you have a class at 1232 is that separate classes or the 3 pm class got shifted to 1230 what happened I think Benjamin is talking about how the notion of radiant essential for ah you mixing the two there brilliant <laughs> brilliant so uh sukanya which is the class is this the 3 pm class which then comes to 12:30 or something um um okay so um, um so that's it then you know so reflect on this uh sandra shane kritika everybody else uh, uh, hitesh this that every one of you 
please then um, uh, think about this. Um, uh, we are, uh, we'll stop here. And uh, I will want you to, um, oh, okay. So I'll want you to, um, um, uh, to, I will not give you any new reading right now. I want you to again go back and read this again. Uh, okay, politics of violence. Okay. Uh, so we'll stop here. So you have too many classes <laughs> um, in spite of Corona. Uh, so we will uh, meet on, uh, I'm not giving you any fresh reading. I want you to go back with it again another two days. So no fresh reading uh, and just look up on YouTube. There's so much on Benjamin, this essay by movie makers, filmmakers, artists. So I want you to really like waste your time, indulge your time surfing the net, looking around this. There's so much on Benjamin. He's a, he's a darling of all these media kind of people. So we will do one thing. So we will meet, uh, so no new readings, which means that we can meet quickly. So can we do it on um, um, uh, Friday or Saturday? Is Saturday fine for everyone? <clears throat> because then I will give you new readings on Saturday. Is Saturday okay? Is Saturday okay? Saturday or Friday? Okay, let's put it on Saturday. So we'll do it on Saturday. Um, uh, Saturday at uh, 10 in the morning. Yeah, so uh, so Saturday we'll do, like today, 10.30. Wake up early, be fresh, 10.30. Uh, I'm not giving you readings, no new readings. Uh, uh, So um, that kind of a thing. So uh, anyone is reading something alongside uh, this, there's the, uh, you know, the experience and poverty essay. Experience and poverty and uh, yeah, please read that. Uh, also the experience and poverty. Uh, so do those, and if you, if there are any uh, questions or queries, you can even like uh, uh, email them to me, um, uh, and uh, um, and also okay, I'll give you another reading on the yeah, there's nice readings, but uh, I'll hold them back. So please stay with uh, Benjamin itself. Um, uh, anybody interested in? Uh, uh okay we'll do it later okay so 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 see you guys then on uh saturday anything else any questions anything so tk will uh stop here uh, no queries has arrived me, has reached me so far. And uh, so we'll stop here. And um, uh, please uh, um, read up again and then, uh, you know, look, look up, look around. There are other movies also you can look at. One was The Triumph of the Will and other this thing. And, uh, oh, my God, Aman is here. I did mail you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Aman, you mail me. Yeah. So uh, you mail me. So that's that's good. Okay. So um, uh, so all the best. And see you guys on Saturday at 1030, like today. So take care and bye.